Ladies and gentlemen, Hi, really Luke Wanky. Luke, where are you right now? I am in North Minneapolis. Uh, we are fully armed, and I'm not going to disclose my location because, you know, we have a really building network. This is international. We have a United Kingdom ambassador we, we've met at the store. I mean, people are walking around. This is this is the epicenter of what's going on in this country right now. You know, I come from, people that know me, I come from a resistance movement myself, upstate New York. It needs to be the state of Iroquois, and I'm very proudly displaying our flag here. And I've gotten to know a lot of these people. The Bujahidin, this is not something I've known about even a week ago. These are, these are physical workers of the anarchist movement they are armed they they help people they are building uh, what they are all about they model themselves after the Afghanistan resistance against the Soviets and you know yesterday we were out there uh, in Minneapolis with these protests and it was peaceful and then it got pretty nasty okay look I want to I want to go we're gonna come back to uh, hold on, we're gonna come back to the issue of the Bujahideen and a full explanation of that term, uh, but but yes. first, tell so for people who, who have no idea who you are, where did you come from in New York? Why did you decide that just? I mean, this is like a, a beautiful story, just to say, because you just saw shit's going down in Minneapolis. I'm going to get there to back people up. Give us the rundown just of, of the last few days of, of how you got there, how you made this decision, and your logistics, so people have a sense of of, of how you got to where you are right now. Okay, well, yeah, I'm I'm 28. I live in Olean, New York. That's uh, south of Buffalo near the Pennsylvania border. So I was the Cattaraugus County Libertarian Chairman. Very active last year. Activities much different this year because of what's going on. But I've met these people through the Libertarian Party. You know, people are politically engaged in all different kinds of ways. So I was very upset to hear that someone I knew from the internet. We're all people on the internet, it seems. Uh, he was abandoned by several of his people, and I was very upset. And quite frankly, I'm not going to go to work, you know, in Buffalo, in Rochester, as I do, when there's unpredictable protests. It's, it's been getting violent up there, too. I'm not going to work. Basically, I have nothing better to do. So I'm prepared to take a few weeks off of my life and be very hands-on with the situation here. And I've gotten to know a lot of people here in Minneapolis. Of course, it's a bigger city, so I'm going to meet more. But... I, I don't want these people by themselves, and I'm getting entrenched in the situation more and more as this time goes on. We didn't know if we were going to go to Des Moines and then South Carolina as of today, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I was tear gassed yesterday with the crowd, and my my tire was screwed with, so I, I'm definitely, you know, experiencing the same things these protesters are. They, a woman was. Now, crying out of her apartment building yesterday, and oh, we're losing you there, Luke. But hey, Luke, what, what else? Luke, one of the, one of the first things that I, I want to get right to away. here. Hey, I'm sorry, you're kind of you're kind of cutting in and out. But I, truck went through a crowd and here. I'm, can you hear me? You, you you're cutting out too. I think it's you. I think it's you that's cutting out. It's 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 showing my. <laughs> well, Luke, one one of the things that I really want to get to here is the thing about the third precinct in minneapolis and that footage that you showed me uh, was that you walking through the building and you know that yes we're gonna get uh, cj if you could bring that up um this this is this is like this is one of the clips where all of my doubts were like oh yeah they they really did yeah okay Wow, and that was this yep. morning. It, yep. This was not as real yep. to me as it is now. Until I saw well, that video. Well, I was there yesterday. I was there yesterday. I was there today. Yeah. So how did you like? What's so, the um, scene like? You said that no, there aren't any police there. People in, in your video where you're doing the voiceover. Uh, yeah, you want to play the audio with this one, CJ? There's just what? Yo, guys, we're in the basement right now. Hey, guys. Oh, God. 
It's probably poisonous to be in this room. It, it, I don't have now, CJ, there's one more clip with them walking in through the front door. If you can find that one, please. I really want to share this with the audience and give Luke a chance to explain this footage. Because, you know, like I said, I had doubts when I, yes, this one, thank you. Like it's a theme park. Um, yeah. I, I go back to the very beginning of this, CJ, just so people can see that what, what people are, what they're actually walking into here. This is the, the main entrance. This is the door where you would walk in to file a police report. Like it's a theme park. Um, yeah. Yep. Cool. I mean, who knows what's been going on in this city? All these, yep, yep, yep. Not a city people normally go to. So there has to be overlooked. It's like looking at the goddamn Titanic sink, except it's a police station. But who knows what's been going on all these years? You know? And, um, right. It's hard to see if there's glass and anything all over the floor. And there's just people in here taking pictures of this toy station. Shattered glass up there. It's hard to see too. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so that's Luke, what what can you tell us about that clip? Okay, so yeah, yesterday this is this was yesterday. Uh, I took these videos, and it, we we parked the car in a very kind of hidden location uh, because I have a New York license plate. We don't want people to target my car, so we walked through town. And this police station is, you know, just a week ago it was a fully functioning police station. There's fencing all around the building now, and people are just walking in like it is a theme park location like we're going on a little tour like like think about epcot when you're going through the different countries looking at this and that it it, it, it kind of reminds me of that it's like looking at a piece of history right up front and close and I, I i don't have it on me but i have a few uh things from that police station i took a fingerprint scanning set and a, a pair of very torched boots i have and I have a toy Nerf gun that was in a locker in the basement in the police station. People were down there with us, just touring the place, looking, taking pictures. And, you know, th th this is one thing. The toy Nerf gun I have, th there was this, like, maybe 10-year-old black kid in the basement with us. And he pulled the Nerf gun out, and he pointed at me, and he's like, die, whitey. So I understood where he was coming from, and I said, no, no, I'm on your side. So I kept that toy Nerf gun because it kind of has a very simple but special wow. story. You know, be based on the culture of what goes on here. I've never, I've been all over the place. I've never had a a, a black kid do that to me before. So, like, like I'll, I'll say, yeah, what an overlooked culture in this city. Who knows what's been going on all these years? But I mean, like, it's like it's a museum at this point, and it reeks of ashes. You go in the basement, it's like you 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 could die if you stay down there an hour. So, mm -hmm. so aside from. So, Luke, aside from being there just generally in support of the call for justice for George Floyd mm -hmm. and, and supporting the protesters, what is your specific objective there, and what is the significance of being armed? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Yesterday, we made quite a difference. It was just myself and um, someone else with the Bujahidin. We're just going to keep some people's identities secret. I, I, I have no problem exposing myself, but we, we were the only ones with guns like this. And... You know what? As someone who lives in the woods, seeing people, just a bunch of plain clothes looking people with guns, they are they are fist bumping us. They were they were you know handshaking us, and they were all getting pictures with us. We really stood out in the crowd. So just us being there is inspiring them to get armed as well. And my message to them every every video that was taken of me i said whatever government can point at you you should be able to point at it and they're just in it they are in absolute agreement and so it, it you know these people these are these are expensive i mean this is like over a thousand dollars you know so 
it, it, it really gets them motivated yeah. to remind themselves that they themselves can stop George Floyd situations from ever happening again. Right. And, and, uh, and, and just I to be clear, be as, much, to government, you know? as much as I can appreciate what it means to spend a thousand dollars on a rifle, I, I want I have to point out to everybody who is taking your message to heart here about equalization of force with government that you can get a shotgun for sixty dollars, uh, simple use pump action shot. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're a little pricier right now than they would normally be. But yeah. for certainly less than a hundred dollars, you can get a functional self defense tool, either a handgun, or shotgun, or even a, a basic function. Um, AK forty seven especially is a very cheap functional rifle, which is why they're so popular and in use all over the world. Of course, never forget that the point of this is peace. The point of this is nonviolence and de-escalation and supporting people asserting their right as Luke is, I think is all the more important in the political sense. And a big part of what he's doing with the nation of Iroquois is showing that you can declare your own nation. You can opt out of the United States or of any bigger government entity. It's a big part of what I'm personally working on with the United Nations I, I, I of Freedom first Project. Like to see a state. I would personally like to see a state, but you've got a lot of people in that region of the world who want to separate from New York City. And it, it, it's not libertarian. It's a Republican, Democrat, nonpartisan thing. So we, will, we want to be Americans. I think we all care about what America should be, the Bill of Rights and all that. But right now, it does not feel like America. And, you know, we, we would hate to see the overthrow of a government that we, we this, this is not a normal year. I mean, we can all agree on that. Right. But, no, no. And, and yeah, look, this is, I what, come from some I, form of resistance. Yeah, no, I'm but, sorry for, for legally yeah. miscategorizing what you're doing with Iroquois, but the idea of people declaring sovereignty saying we don't just we don't have to just do it this way because it's always been done that way we're the millennials coming into power we can redraw all the lines on the map if we feel like it we want to localize we want to create new communities we want to declare our sovereignty as individuals first and foremost and say i'm a human being god damn it my life has value and you can't force me into your centralized system without my consent if i don't want to be a part of it I'm not going to be a part of it. I'm going to opt out. And with whatever way available to me, I'm going to defend my ability to do that and to be free. And so, Luke, you are really, you know, I, I have always respected your activism, especially organizing within the Libertarian Party, but also now, you know, getting out. I hope that you're able to do what you are doing in a way that continues to promote de-escalation. I really hope that this doesn't get further in in where we see it going. While it's tempting to say, "Hey, yeah, if we," I push Rothbard's button, and if Rothbard's button has a little button next to it that says "Burn down all the police precincts in America," I'd be like, "Yeah, push, yeah, push the button." But we 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 still want to keep our eye on the prize of the longer term goal of, of peace and de-escalation. So I, I want to ask you one last question. In, in kind of summing this up, as we see, you know, coronavirus and this is sort of like an escalation this year. We see all of this stuff planned, manipulated, engineered, orchestrated, even the protests that you're going out a lot. They're, they're only happening because the mainstream media is blowing this up. If, if it, the grassroots protests without the mainstream media would be a lot less significant. So with that being said, is this coming to a flashpoint that we should be pushing towards, or should we push to de-escalate this so that we can get back to the real progress? You, you know, myself and yourself, we're all just individuals. I mean, there's drive-by shootings in this city, and it, the cops are dying all across the country. So it's not de-escalating, but if we, well, there goes my flag. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if, if, we, if we personally intervene, we can absolutely de-escalate. Like I said, just these people seeing us fully armed uh, yesterday, it, it, it builds up their sense of self-esteem, knowing that they have someone on their side. And we, we de-escalate riots when the people in the riots feel stronger. If they feel helpless, they panic and they're thinking on emotion and they're charging towards the National Guard. And we're going to de-escalate it once they feel equal again. But we don't want any shots fired towards the National Guard. But like I said, it's very unfortunate that these things are happening out there right now. Right now, it's not de-escalating, but we are going to continue to personally intervene as we've done yesterday, and it really made a difference. But 
today, whatever happens, we got to be with crowds. You never just go out there by yourself. You know, there's no there's no centralized organization between with all these riots going on. So you never know what somebody's thinking. Um, it is absolutely possible to de-escalate this, but people need to feel equal. And the only way for them to feel equal is that they know they can uh, look yes. at the government eye eye. Yes. Yes. No, I, I love how what you are doing right now really is a manifestation of de-escalate and empower simultaneously. I think together that 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 really is a, a core part of the message for libertarians. And while things are violent, empowering means self-defense, standing up to police. I hope that your work is successful in de-escalation and that empowering people right now leads to enough de-escalation so that we can go back to empowering people in the deeper way through political activism, through reform of this. And I hate to say reform because, you know, me, I'm like, I'm still like, to me, reform means dismantle, right? But that, that we can, we can, we can look to the, the long term. We should do that anyway. <laughs> of learning the lessons from all of this. So Luke, any, any last thoughts? And then please, how can people connect with you? How do you want people to be able to get in touch with you right now? All people find me on Facebook. They know I'm on Facebook and Twitter. They know where to find me. If, you, if you're just new to me, find me. It's Luke Winky. There's I have three Facebooks. Luke Marshall Winky, Luke Winky. You'll notice which one is my political profile. Message me, add me, Twitter me, tweet at me, message me. Um, I, it's very easy to, I, like, I, I'm from a 14-hour drive away. This is like a 1,000 miles. So it's so possible. Don't come alone. Um, obviously, if you come with us, we are very easy to get along. These, these are local Minneapolis residents I'm with. I never knew them before yesterday. So you're, it is absolutely possible to just come up. It's a, where, wherever you're living right now, you are part of the bigger world. So, you, you know, just back home in Olean, they had a protest with several hundred people. And Olean's like 15,000 people, largest city in a 50-mile radius. You don't hear protests this large. Whatever's going on in the bigger world can absolutely trickle into your home areas. Um, and we don't want any violence. So please, if you can, come and help us with what we're doing. And it's going to empower more people, knowing that they have more people like this prepared to stand equal with them. It's a drive. Uh, flying might be a little risky these days, but you know, my and everyone has a different work situation. But and, you know, honestly, donating uh, uh, like things like milk and baking soda when people get tear gassed. I didn't know this until yesterday. Milk and baking soda help people after getting tear gassed. Water makes it worse. So, good ways to donate and it just donate your your sense of physically being there. So, so definitely reach yeah. out to me. Beautiful. And we'll include the basic links so you can make sure you can find Luke on Facebook in the description in the show notes where you're seeing this. And uh, I, I, Luke, I, I told people we come back to the term Bujahideen later. And this is this is the internet meme of the libertarian underbelly. For people who don't know, look up the Boogaloo. B O O G A L O O, and it started. I, yeah, I, as I, I understand, from my point of view, with the libertarians, I've always mm -hmm. sensed that anarchists had some kind of discrimination against them with all of the libertarians. So the Bujahideen, this is not something I, I didn't know about this for maybe a week. Th th these are physical. Uh, they do the physical work of anarchism. Okay, we can sit in the comment section all day and make our opinions heard, but the physical work, which is what we're doing, they're another decentralized organization, very small in numbers. They are modeling themselves after something in the Middle East. Um, but this is another internet subculture with with anarchist type people, and it is their goal. You know, it rests here first. It doesn't come from the top down authority, but it is their goal to stop the man from oppressing people because none of us voted for this shutdown so what the hell does democracy mean anymore and the bujahideen is a, they are real people they have very hard lifestyles and very hard li uh, life backgrounds but there's no way that we have to support these people the bujahideen look into them yes so yeah this this term was uh bastardized on the internet as a res in order to escape censorship boogaloo referring to the revolutionary civil war in a positive sense uh was censored by a lot of social media platforms so people started referring to it as the big igloo 
And that's why we have Big Igloo Geodesics as our business name, as a as an ode to that and our sort of peaceful way of achieving the boogaloo, the revolution through homesteading, through nonviolent means, lifestyle adjustments, through agorism and withdrawing your support materially from the system. And so there was the term boog boys, B-O-O-G space, B-O-I-S, boog boys, as in the guys who, and, and it's, it's this, you know, you call it an, an, an internet subculture, even just this little corner of the internet where everybody knows who this meme that's, is. That's how people do these days. We're all on the internet. We haven't even met in person yet, Adam. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have gotten into the Libertarian Party if it weren't for my ability to prod the internet. So people need to just understand that the, the larger world is so accessible. I'm just some guy that delivered pizza for five years, for God's sakes. That we can, you can engage yourself in the larger world and help the bougie the bougie. <laughs> yeah, the absolutely. So I'll, I'll just say it, it's very exciting to see what to me was this fun meme fantasy internet subculture come to life and and evolve like into it, something it, it, more it's tough boy boi i think they're cute and they get all decked out in gear so i think that's what they're doing they give it a sense of fantasy too <laughs> Well, we will be following this story. We'll be keeping up with you, Luke. Please keep the footage coming. Happy to share that on, on our social media. And uh, if, if you have anybody else you think we should interview for, from the Buja uh, I'd, I'd be happy to make this platform available to get further into this topic. Thanks for joining us today, Luke. Thank you for having me on. Good to talk to you.